let's take research and science out of the ivory tower, shall we? And as part of that, I think we need to talk about critical appraisal. Critical appraisal is the process of carefully and systematically examining research to judge its trustworthiness and its value and relevance in a particular context. This quote comes from the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme, or short CAST. As they go on to say, critical appraisal skills are important as they enable you to assess systematically the trustworthiness, relevance and results of published papers. Where an article is published or who wrote it should not be an indication of its trustworthiness or relevance. So to some of you, this may already come as a surprise. As we know about all of the hoo-ha around high impact journals, so for instance, journals that have very high impact factor uh, tend to be read more often, they tend to be cited more often, and so on and so forth. But actually, it turns out that that doesn't necessarily always correspond to scientific rigor and quality. But coming back to the original question, what is critical appraisal? Well, I can tell you what it is not and that is criticising what's published. But instead, it's more assessing the value of what is published. And in fact, there are a number of tools available for critical appraisal of published papers. And in today's session, we will demonstrate them and how they are applied to various aspects of clinical and public health practice, as well as in the broader field of evaluation. Critical appraisal really is a bit of a guided art, I guess, in that way. It can also be incredibly valuable as a teaching method, and that is to identify strengths, weaknesses, and applicability of various research designs. That's why, for instance, the collaborative library embeds this in assessment processes to make students really go into depth and detail and understand how to critically assess individual studies to deduct how good the quality of the underlying trial or RCT or cohort study or whatever the design is. If you're now hooked and you want to find out a little bit more about how to critically appraise, what tools there are available and also how it links in with the anatomy of a research paper, then listen to part two. Let's have a look at the anatomy of research papers first. Although there are many different types of research and ways of publishing the results, there is a common theme in many types of research performed. So let's look at public health as an example. One of the things that we need to look at is the population being studied the exposure to a causative factor or an intervention perhaps, and the outcome. We need to assess the features of each of these. The GATE G -A -T -E, framework is a very useful way of depicting this. I've added a picture to this audio because I think it shows the anatomy of a research paper really well, and thus what to look out for in critical appraisal of the paper. Each aspect needs to be explored, as I said, so the population, how it was selected for instance, the intervention or possible exposure to a causative factor, so how they were chosen and measured and if this was biased perhaps. Next, the comparison group, so if there was one and if so, if it was appropriate. The outcome, was this an appropriate outcome, how was it measured and if this was biased and also the study frame. Of course, there's much more to consider in appraising a publication, but ultimately it all hangs on the basic anatomy of the research performed. It turns out that there are quality checklists available, published online on websites such as CASP, which outline the quality characteristics for different types of study, so anything from a randomised controlled trial to a cohort study. These are particularly useful for professionals and people working in science and the wider professional sort of area of science because it helps them design research in a way that they can make sure that they hit those quality standards. On the other hand side, it also enables them to understand the quality of the paper that they're actually reading if they wanted to critically assess it. 
Now, if you're not a professional or perhaps not quite a researcher yet, but you want to understand, then there is a more jargon-free and accessible version of all of these different types of checklists alongside an explanation of the different types of study available on the Collaborative Library webpage if you go to the Glossary and Jargon Buster by clicking on the ellipses at the bottom of the page. That should get you started. Just to give you an idea, have a look at this example. It's the checklist on the Collaborative Library website for a randomised controlled trial. So at first you'll find uh, a bit of information around what a randomised controlled trial is in easily accessible language. And then if you scroll down, you can find the quality assessment guide, which basically operates on a very easy to understand uh, scale, where a tick means yes, an X means no, a question mark means I'm sure, and then also you can obviously um, find if something is not applicable to. And that hopefully will make it a lot easier for you to approach critical appraisal for any type of given study going forwards because it effectively guides you with questions and it tells you exactly what you ought to be looking for. So no more black box thinking here. We can demystify what critical appraisal is by basically following these simple questionnaires. Now we've spoken a lot about CAS, but there is also other fairly simple and generic checklists. So for instance, the Newcastle Critical Appraisal Worksheet was developed as a very simple 11 question checklist that could be applied to, well, quite arguably most types of study. But as you can see, uh, if you have a look at the website uh, in a bit more detail, that many people actually prefer to use checklists that relate to a particular type of study because obviously that enables finer grained critical appraisal. So if you have some time on your hands, perhaps have a look at these and see what you think. So in a nutshell, that means there is a recipe for designing great studies by acknowledging all those different characteristics that are listed in the quality checklists. And there is also a recipe for evaluating those underlying studies by checking if all of those steps in the original recipe have been followed. This should make it a lot easier for you to understand the underlying quality of any study that you're looking at. Enjoy!